In the last episode of The Fall of Alba's story, card by card, we covered the beginning of the story, the encounter between Ecclesia and Fallen of Albaz. We talked a little bit about the dogmatic nation and what they believe in, and of course, the tribe brigade tribe that saved Albaz and Ecclesia from the capital and brought them to the desert. The story of Fallen of Albaz has 178 cards depicting the characters the events and the places the story takes place in. And in this video series, we're gonna cover all of them and look at how card names, the artwork, and of course the effects influence the story and tell it card by card. Starting off with two cards that are actually not playable, they are tokens. We have the Albaz the Exile and of course Ecclesia the Exile. These tokens depict Ecclesia and Albaz under a huge skeleton of some sort of desert whale with a fire going, eating, but also not facing each other, actually facing away from each other. This is one of the first time that this couple is alone, scared in the desert. Ecclesia is far from home and Albus is not really sure what is going on. The token of Albus the Shrouded says, does his name refer to a past buried in darkness or to a bright future? And Ecclesia's token says, a pure white heart to be filled with many memories. With thoughts of coming days in mind, the girl gifts a name to the boy. This is basically when Ecclesia names Albaz, Albaz. This chapter of the story begins with the card Spring Anne's Watch. They are of course watching through various mechanical telescopes, the couple making their way into the desert in search of something. The watch adds the great Sansi Gold Golgonda from the deck to your hand. Which is, of course, our next card in the story, the Great Sea Sand, Gaul Galt Ganda. It makes all Springgans Xyz monsters on the field gain 1000 attack points. Since this is their home, it makes perfect sense. Springgans Captain Sargas is the introduction to the tribe itself. This card is in your hand, field, or graveyard. You can target a Springgans Xyz monster you control and you attach this card to it as a material. And as a quick effect during your opponent's turn, you can detach a material from an Xyz you control, then target a face up card on the field destroyed. This is Sargas essentially deploying the Spring Ends in battle and destroying their targets. We also have the great Spring Ends ship X Blower and the Spring Ends characters that are introduced in this part of the story. Rocky, Pador, and of course Branga. And we're also introduced to another character that is not part of the Spring Ends tribe. Her name is Kit. She's actually from the tribe brigades. Ecclesia and Albaz were sent into the desert to actually search for Kit. And this is why she appears in this order of the pool of cards together with the Spring Anne's tribes. In the card art of Tribe Drive, you can see Kit working away on some new weapons and some new mechanical stuff for the Tribe Brigade. It is not an actual lore card, but it also depicts Kit and what she's actually doing there in the desert. So Kit was sent into the desert by Shreg to work together with the Spring Ants in building new weapons for the Tri Brigade for an upcoming war. And in Tri Brigade Rendezvous, we can actually see Kit discovering the tied up Ecclesia and Albaz and around them, a bunch of sorry looking Spring Ants, not really sure what they're doing because Kit apparently is kind of mad. She recognizes the Mercurial bird above their head and said, hey, I know this bird. These guys might be here for me. Rendezvous is a quick play spell that targets any number of linked beast, beast warrior or winged beast monsters you control, gains them 700 attack until the end of the turn. If a link beast, beast warrior or winged beast monster you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. So essentially saying that Kit is the one that supplies the tri brigade with her power, but also protects them from afar. Now that Kit has released the couple from the ties of the Spring Gans, we have the Spring Gans Call Trap card that targets either a Spring Gans monster or Fall of Albaz and special summon it, connecting the two together. And in the art, we can see Kit running away with the two, Kit being such an essential part to the story, but at the top of the artwork, we can see the Spring Ants kind of worried about a hole opening up in the sand. But while Kid releases the couple from the ties of the Spring Ants, the Spring Ants are not convinced and are not yet happy. And the Spring Ants brothers are sent on the attack. If this card is sent from the hand or deck to the graveyard, you can target a Spring Ant monster in the graveyard, except brothers, special summon it in defense position, and if this card is in your hand, field or graveyard, you can target the Spring Ends Xyz and attach this card to it as material. And this card deploys the Spring Ends into battle. We quickly see Albaz figuring out the attack is on the way 
and together with Kit and Ecclesia, turns into Sprint the Iron Dash Dragon. It's a machine dragon form, which of course coincides with the Spring Ants, and it includes Fallen Valbaz and an effect monster special summon this turn. And Spring can move itself to a different column to destroy all face-up cards in that column, and during the end phase, of course, special summon a Spring Ants or Fallen Valbaz from the deck. We can see the battle taking place in Spring Ants Blast, while the Spring Ants tribe try to fire out a lot of missiles to hit the running away form of Fallen Valbaz. And of course, we see the Merrymaker, which is now deployed to catch the couple with a ton of missiles in its barrels. But eventually, the Spring Ants relax. They understand that they are friends, not foes. And we have the Spring Ants booty, which is a huge celebration of the peace between all the people in the desert now. If a face-up Xyz monster you control leaves the field by a card effect, you can target an effect monster your opponent controls and neither player can activate that effect monster's effects on the field this turn. And you can send this face-up card on the field to the graveyard to activate the Great Sea of Golgonda directly from the deck or grave. But now we have to cut away from the desert into the capital. And now we are at the beginning of a new age with a trap card, Dogmatica Genesis. In the artwork, we can see a new beginning for the Dogmaticas where we see Maximus anointing a new saint. We don't know her name or who she is, but we can pretty much figure out on our own that now that Ecclesia is no longer a part of the Dogmatica, there needs to be another saint to take her place as the 666th saint of the Dogmatica tribe. And now the Dogmatica has 666 saints in its orders, Maximus can finally start the ritual he's been preparing for in the art of Dogmatic Calamity. And it's an actual ritual because Dogmatic Calamity is used to ritual summon any Dogmatica ritual monsters. And you can also tribute monster from hand or field or just send one monster with the exact level from your extra deck to the grave. Essentially sending powers from the other world that Dogmatica is so opposed to to begin the ritual and usher in a new type of monster. And that type of monster is the White Knight of Dogmatica. Fleur de Lis armor corrupted by the powers of this very dark ritual Maximus just performed, which is a level eight light spellcaster that lost all of its attack, but kept his defense 2,500, which is the same as Fleur de Lis. It locks you out of the extra deck, and if your opponent activates a card or effect, you can send from your extra deck to the graveyard, and if you do, you look at your opponent's extra and do the same thing. And this card gains the attack to half of the combined attack of those monsters sent to the graveyard. So essentially the white knight under Maximus's dark spell reaches out into the opponent's world and gains powers by sending monsters from their extra deck. And this ritual is not only for the powers of the Dogmatica people. This is actually starting to turn the Dogmaticas into something else. And this is the time where we are introduced to the new building that is adorning the skyline of the Dogmatica nation. It is now the Theater of the Branded. The Theater of the Branded is the Despia Field Spell. During the main phase, you can fusion summon a level eight or higher fusion from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as material. And if a non-fusion fairy monster you control leaves the field, you can target a level eight or higher fusion monster and bring it back from the dead. Now those non-fusion fairies are the Despias, which are essentially the people of Dogmatica that has turned into this dark fairy form because of Maximus's dark ritual. We have the comedy, the tragedy, Ad Libidum, which is new incarnation of Maximus's loyal guards, the Ashian, and of course, a figure that has emerged from a hole in the sky where the ritual takes place, Aluber, the Jester of Despia. This, of course, on normal or special, adds a branded spell or trap from your deck to your hand, and if a face-up fusion monster you control leaves the field by battle or card effect, while it's in the graveyard, you can target an effect monster your opponent controls, special summon Aluber, and then negate the targeted monster's effect until the end of the turn. And Albert obviously is one of the most influential cards in the branded story. This is the first time we are met with the word branded, even before Albaz knows that he can use its own brand to use and access different types of powers. So Alubur probably knows a lot about Albaz that Albaz doesn't even know himself. In the next chapter of the story, we are introduced to the chaos that takes place in the capital. More Dogmaticas 
turning into Despias with things like Praskinian and Quiridus, Alubur taking its own first dragon form in Masquerade, the continuation of the battle in the desert with Fleur de Lis reappearing as a new character, and of course the introduction of a completely new and hidden tribe, the Sword Soul. Thank you so much for watching and listening so far for this second chapter of the Alpha story. Card by card, make sure to like this video and of course subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next chapter. Peace.